Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is March 13th and over the next hour or so we're going to have a couple of big stories developing. We have a press conference that we've that's just been called by the city and it's to update us on COVID-19 in our community. That's right. And then at 10 o'clock we've got the anticipated press conference from the Fiesta Commission with an update on the situation regarding uh, one of the biggest public events of the year here in San Antonio, of course, Fiesta. Thanks. And all they've told us is it's in regards to the Fiesta schedule. We don't know any details if it's been canceled or postponed, but both of them we will bring you live. We will. Top stories coming up as well, and we'll be checking with Katie on your weekend forecast, but we'd like to accentuate the positive, especially with uh, all the news yes. making headlines these days. It's always nice to make you smile when it yeah. seems like every time you turn on the television or the radio or look at your phone, it's bad news. Well, here's some good news. Here's something to make you smile. A heartwarming photo has gone viral. It's a police officer sharing pizza with a homeless woman. This is it right there. Goldsboro Police Department in North Carolina. The officer is is Michael Rivers been with the force there for nine years. He has become known as the face of the homeless community. Uh, Wednesday, he came across a homeless woman never seen before. Her shirt caught his eye. It read homeless, the fastest way of becoming a nobody. Well, he had his windows down, so they made eye contact and they acknowledged each other. He said hi and drove away, but something kept tugging at him. He said, God put it on my heart to get her lunch. So I turned around and I asked her, hey, did you eat today? And she said, no. So he grabbed pepperoni and cheese pizza from a nearby pizza shop, sat down on the grass, as you see right there next to her. They shared the pizza. He said that was great, but the conversation was even better. Sat there 45 minutes and uh, as a matter of fact, the post clearly went viral. Uh, someone put on Facebook, law enforcement does so much for our community with a lot of it going unnoticed. We see you, Goldsboro PD. Keep up the good work. 3,500 shares. And he said what he learned about her was she's just like everybody else. You know, people have a tendency to look down on homeless people like it's their fault. Mm -hmm. He said it isn't. She told him that she had a 12-year-old daughter who's battling liver disease and is in foster care, a 23-year-old son, her husband is also homeless, and he was standing across the street as they conversed. Rivers said, I come to work, my method is, who can I bless today? Who can I make smile? I'm not the one who wants to take somebody's father or mother away and put them in jail. And the chief had nothing but high praise for Officer Rivers. What a fantastic gesture and a lesson to all of us. I come to work, and my method is, as you just said, who can I bless today? Who can I make smile? We should all say that every day. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Good morning to you. It is Friday, March 13th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Now, American doctors are watching closely how Italy's healthcare system responds. Officials say Italy has more doctors and hospital beds per capita than the United States. Head of the Fiesta San Antonio Commission did acknowledge that the coronavirus concerns could eventually force it to be postponed, maybe even canceled. And overseas, the new European travel ban that goes into effect tonight, creating chaos at airports around the world as Americans try to get home. Last night, PGA Tour sent out a tweet confirming the rest of the Players' Championship and all events through the Bolero Texas Open have now been canceled. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson updated fans about their fight against the coronavirus in Australia. They shared a photo thanking everyone down under for taking such good care of them. Police say their fellow officer was traveling southbound the AT&T Parkway when he ran into the side of a big rig. He was taken to SAMSI with minor injuries. This morning, the U.S. military has carried out airstrikes in Iraq in retaliation for an attack had killed two U.S. service members. The airstrikes targeted militia members backed by Iran, who the U.S. believe are behind the attack on the American soldiers. And the president of the U.S. Soccer Federation has resigned amid outrage over some controversial language he used in a court filing. Precinct 4 Commissioner Tommy Calvert wrote a letter to Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf asking that independent forensic investigators the court called for be hired by the next commissioner's court meeting. When Elizabeth became the longest ruling monarch in UK history, September 2015, when she passed her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, who spent 63 years on the throne. Former presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg took over Jimmy Kimmel's show. As you know, I dropped out of the presidential race last week, which was unfortunate, but uh, what can I say? Some candidates know when it's time to get out of the race, and some candidates are Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> We saw a few more clips earlier today. The Mayor, mayor Pete did pretty good filling in. It was actually funny. Yeah, he was. He had some self-deprecating humor on it, too, which I thought was hilarious. That's always good. 902 right now. Let's take a look outside with live cam. It is your Friday. We have super meteorologist Katie Blake in the house. And where's the sun? Good morning. I know. <laughs> 
exciting. Uh, we've got a lot of clouds again this morning. It's been warm and it has been muggy out there. And to top things off on this Friday the 13th, we have a pretty ugly pollen count. Oak and mold are both high today. So that well, one of those two probably going to get you if you don't suffer from an oak allergy. Uh, mold may cause you some issues today. Hackberry and mulberry are both low on this Friday. Things will be staying warm and humid not only today, but also through the weekend. We could see a couple of isolated showers as we head into the back half of the weekend, but better rain chances look to settle in early and then through the middle part of next week. We'll talk all about that coming up in your full forecast. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Katie. We're looking right now 151 and 410 out there in that big construction zone. Traffic appears to be running smoothly in all directions, even on the frontage road. Well, top stories that we're following for you today. The Cibolo Police Department have a man, has a man in custody following an hours long standoff. Started around four yesterday afternoon was one of our top stories here in case cut happened in the 200 block of Willow Bluff. Police say a suspect barricaded himself in a home with a gun after hours of negotiation department posted on Facebook. The man had peacefully surrendered around 1115 last night. Well, the man has been identified as 34 year old Evan Robert Ford. He's been charged with attempted capital murder. Well, as we mentioned at the very top of the newscast in just a matter of minutes towards the bottom of the hour, the city of San Antonio will be giving us an important update about the coronavirus. They will be talking about several issues like preparedness and response. Mayor Ron Nierberg, city council members, city manager, as well as director of Metro Health will all be a part of it. We will be taking that update live or when it happens right here on GMSA at 9 and also on KSAT.com. So keep it here. Well, later today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is expected to hold a press conference to address coronavirus concerns across the Lone Star State. The pressure will take place uh, at noon from the Texas State Capitol. The governor expected to address the state's continued effort to combat COVID-19. Representatives from the Texas Division of Emergency Management and the Texas Department of State Health Services expected to speak. Make sure you tune in to our later newscast and check KSAT.com for the latest information from this press conference. Coronavirus uh, concerns have led to cancellations of large-scale events all around the world. That's so true. Here at home, Fiesta is still set to proceed as normal, but that could change in the next hour. Max Massey joins us live outside the Fiesta Commission on Broadway. So any indication of what they're going to announce at this press conference, Max? Good morning, guys. We've seen more than a dozen Fiesta officials walk through these doors behind me. And the ones I've talked to had a smile on their face, but to answer your question, Leslie, no. No indication, no one really showing their hand just yet. So let's take a look at what we know thus far this morning. That press conference set for 10 a.m. this morning. The Fiesta Commission and city officials hosting it right here at the Commission office on Broadway. Now the topic of the news conference, the Fiesta 2020 schedule. As of Tuesday, Fiesta was still set to proceed as scheduled, and that schedule was set for April 16th to the 26th. But in recent events, that may now change, considering all we've seen in just the last 48 hours. The Fiesta Commission Executive Director Amy Shaw telling us earlier this week, quote, I would hate to see Fiesta canceled altogether. You know, postponement would be a much better alternative, end quote. So for now, guys, we wait until 10 a.m. And once we know, you will know we'll be streaming this live on KSAT and KSAT.com, so make sure to stay tuned. 10 a.m., we should have the latest on the plans for Fiesta 2020. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. As the novel coronavirus spreads in the United States and across the globe, there are many questions about the virus, about how it spreads, and how we should react as individuals and communities. Here at KSAT, we've been getting a lot of your questions, and we've been reaching out to medical professions, professionals rather, for answers. This morning at 1030, we'll be hosting a live stream answering some of your questions. You can submit them right now. Go to KSAT.com slash coronavirus. Well, convicted of killing two babies and suspected of murdering dozens more, KSAT News at 9 uncovers a story behind one of the most shocking suspected serial killers in Texas history, Janine Jones. Here's a sneak peek of a special airing next week. We all want to know why, and I don't know if we ever will. There is no telling what damage Jane Jones had caused. A new charge against a convicted murderer known as the Angel of Death. It's real people that have real, um, that have a real stake in it, and there was a lot of stakeholders. I trusted you with my daughter, 
It could have been anyone's child. You should have to serve one year for every year of life you rob from the babies that you murdered. How could you do something like this to an innocent child? A baby in a casket for anybody. It's hard, you know, and to know that he was murdered. We cannot, as a society, allow that to go unpunished. This is one of those cases that you just don't forget. In a Killer's Care airs Monday night on KSAT's digital-only newscast, The News at 9. You can watch it online at ksat.com or any way you stream us. That's powerful stuff. This 908, 69 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are wrapping up our spring break fun with a simple snack activity for your kiddos. It's a great way to get their creative juices flowing. NBA, MLB, even the XFL, many sporting events canceled or indefinitely suspended. David Sears helps us keep track of it all coming up a little bit later in this newscast. It looks like something out of a movie, but this crash following a street race happened in real life. Details after the break. Get yeah, your morning headlines. Wait till you see all of the video. Let's check on the market right now. And well, I mean, nice the question is positive territory for now, right? Uh, up about uh, 685 points at 21,885. So up roughly three and a quarter percent. Welcome back, everyone. It's 12 minutes after 9. More evidence the coronavirus doesn't care who gets infected, and a mountain lion attacks a sheriff's deputy. Street race gone bad, and a fire department called on to bear down and save a precious little friend. We say good morning to Mr. David Sears. Hi, David. That'll be a tough story to tell, but we'll grin and bear it. We will. Ah, uh, David. Get a little serious first, though. Once again, we are finding out that this coronavirus has no bounds. The wife of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has tested positive for the virus. Sophie Trudeau feeling well and will remain in isolation. That's according to a statement from the Prime Minister's office. Now, the Prime Minister is not showing any signs of the virus. However, he will stay in isolation for the next 14 days. He's able to conduct business on the phone. The Prime Minister expected to address Canadians sometime today. Scary scene in Colorado. That's a mountain lion attacking a female deputy. It happened at an RV park. The deputy fights off the line by putting her arm up and protecting her face and neck. Cat finally ran away, actually attacked another person in the park before it went after the deputy. The deputy and that other person attacked, expected to be okay. The lion shot and killed. Now to Florida, two vehicles racing on a very tight street. Here they come. Guy on the right, culvert, Ooh. and look out. Oh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Airborne vehicle completely smashed with landed on the roof. <gasps> I thought it was amazing that anybody came out of there alive. The top of the car was smashed completely down to the doors. I can't believe that somebody came out of there alive. Yeah, police, EMS, fire crews quickly came out to check on the teens. Third hand of knowledge, but you know how neighbors talk. Apparently the teenager has some broken ribs and that's it, but he is alive. That's a good thing. Finally, head to Florida. The fire department couldn't bear to see a kindergarten suffer through the loss of a little stuffed animal. Ashton had a little bear named Rockstar Freddy. Little bear ended up on the roof of the school. Ashton was losing sleep over the separation. The school called the fire department to retrieve the little guy. The fire department used the ladder truck retrieved Rockstar Freddy off the roof, and the two were reunited. How sweet. Aww. Aww. So now Ashton is sleeping a little better these days because right. Rockstar Freddy's back home. That crash video was, that was wild, right? something. I cannot believe it. Like that witness said, and no one was killed. Only broken ribs. Fast and furiously yeah. violent, wasn't so, it? Yeah. And we'll be back to talk about, it's, it's, obviously this is a very strange time, mm -hmm. and then you turn on the TV and there's, Nothing. No sports no at sports. Well, And we just got notice that the Masters yeah, been delayed. Yeah, so we'll talk about that a little bit and kind of the impact that this is this is going to have on networks, on people. Biggest on worldwide workers. sports shutdown That's, since World yeah, War II. Absolutely wow. amazing. Mind-boggling. Yeah. All right, catch up with you in a bit. All right. Thank you. Hey there. Good morning. So it's going to be another warm one today. Oh, my gosh. Yes, 87 yesterday, mm -hmm. which Hot. is, yeah, go way above average. So if you've thought to yourself, should it be this warm already? No. 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 <laughs> no, it shouldn't. So we had some folks in the low 90s yesterday. Today, I expect us to get back into the low to mid 80s with a bit more cloud cover. Yesterday, we were able to clear out pretty nicely late morning, early afternoon before those high thin clouds really settled in. Uh, today, I don't think we'll see as much blue sky, so that'll bring our temperatures down a few degrees in the low 70s. By lunchtime, we've got low clouds out there along with the high clouds. Some of those lower clouds should break up as we head into the afternoon, but we're going to keep that high cloud cover around, so it'll be looking
looking and feeling mostly cloudy for your Friday. No rain falling out of these clouds. Unfortunately, we definitely could use the rain uh, and temperatures are generally in the upper 60s and low 70s. 73 in Beeville, 70 in uh, New Braunfels, excuse me. Just shy of 70 degrees out in Del Rio, a bit cooler in the northern portion of the state. And these lucky guys are getting in on some shower and thunderstorm activity uh, this morning. There's actually a, a pretty big swath of rain from North Texas that extends north of the I-20 corridor off into Arkansas and then Mississippi. There's actually a, a cool front boundary there with some cooler air behind it, but helping to spark some of the shower activity. That front, unfortunately, is not going to be moving much farther south than it is right now. That'll be staying off to the north and won't help to bring us any rain or cooler air. I want you to look off to the west coast as well. So we've got a couple things going on here. We've got that surface frontal boundary, but a little bit higher up in the atmosphere. We've got an upper level low that's spinning over Southern California. This is what has brought in all of that high cloud cover uh, that we saw yesterday. And this is also helping to uh, pump in some moisture here in the form of rain uh, there across the desert southwest. This is an upper level low pressure system that if we could get it to move due east into Texas could maybe help us out with a little bit of rain. But unfortunately, it's going to take a nice jog off to the northeast tonight and into tomorrow. And so a lot of the rain associated with this upper low pressure system is going to miss us to the north. And what's going to kind of happen as we get into tomorrow and then into Sunday is the energy of that upper level low is going to meet up with that surface frontal boundary and that's just going to result in more rain for the far northern and eastern portion of Texas. Whereas we may see a stray shower tomorrow, uh, we're going to stay pretty dry as we head into the weekend. I do want to mention something though as we get into Sunday forecast does get a little bit tricky. There will be a frontal boundary that will try to move down into central Texas on Sunday. Now one of our forecast models that has a history of being fairly good with temperatures where fronts are concerned, does bring this front down into our area on Sunday morning. That would mean a couple of things. That would mean we would see some cooler air, some drier air, and could potentially see more shower activity along the frontal boundary itself. So we're watching this really closely. I'm going to be checking our forecast model updates today. Adam Kasky will have more uh, later on tonight as these models continue to update, but this could potentially mean a cooler Sunday for us right now. I still have us in the mid 70s with a 30% chance of some isolated showers and a non severe storm as we get into Sunday. But just know if more of our forecast models kind of come in line with that one, we could be trending a little bit cooler as we get into Sunday. So of course we'll keep you updated looking ahead to next week. Better chances of rain entered the forecast scattered showers and non severe thunderstorms in the forecast Monday uh, really through Thursday next week as our weather pattern changes up a little bit. It'll be uh, a little bit messy. See, we'll have some upper level disturbances moving through, but that could bring us a nice scattering of rain. We're hopeful we could get some nice rain here across our very dry, dry earth. Yes, my lawn is screaming. Feed me. Every, you can almost hear it if you listen really close. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's just the crunch. Yeah. The crunch. yeah. <laughs> hey, don't forget to stand by. We've got an important coronavirus coming update coming up at the bottom of the hour from the city of San Antonio. Right now, it's just about 920. Are you looking for easy ways to get your kids excited to try new foods? Well, don't go anywhere. Just ahead on GMSA at 9, how you can turn a watermelon into a whole new world of fun. Hey, we get it. You've struggled all week. Can't get kids away from the TV this spring break. We may have the answer for you. This morning we are talking about a snack activity that will encourage their creativity. Here's how you can put together a watermelon construction site. Yummy. These are what are available at HEB right now, these personal watermelons. And I just took it and cut it in half and then cut off the end so that it had a, a flat part to sit on top of like this. And just get creative. Go into your playroom, see what you have that's construction site type stuff. Maybe grab some popsicle sticks if you have them. Just whatever you have around. Blueberries, fill a hole, make a hole for them to dig and just play. And they will sit and play with this for a while. As you can see, they'll be very entertained by it. Letting kids play with food like this is a really unthreatening way for them to experience it before eating it. So if you have a picky eater in your life, this is a really fun way to get their hands dirty, let them feel textures and smells and stuff before they actually um, have to try it. Yummy. 
Yummy. Just one of the activities we featured this week. You can check them all out on KSAT.com, including how to have a healthy apple donut decorating party. And it looks just as fun as it sounds. That's uh, much more also on our website, KSAT.com, in our kids section. Your time now is just about 24 minutes after 9. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Coronavirus concerns have led to the suspension and cancellation of several major sporting events and even leagues, including an update on a major golf event. David Sears back to help us keep track of all the changes happening minute by minute. And checking the roads as we had to break. 35 at Flores looking just fine. 35 at Martin looking good as well. Hey, as soon as we get an update, we are going to go straight to that press conference scheduled by the city of San Antonio. An important update headed your way momentarily. All right, so the World Health Organization, they're all saying stop gathering in large yep. masses. That's what they want to do to try to curb the spread of the virus. Mm -hmm. And people are listening, <laughs> listening, apparently. Apparently all the major sports have listened and they've, they've pretty much canceled or postponed all major sports. The biggest one come yesterday. I think was the NCAA tournament finally getting around to making the decision to, and they canceled it. They're not postponing it. They just flat out canceled it. So we're not even going to worry about it. Right. NBA year, season so. has just been and, postponed. And NBA season has been postponed. But the thing about the NCAA tournament is it affects all these cities where all these preliminary rounds take place, working up to the finals in, in, uh, in Atlanta. And then not only that, but you remember even you got involved in it. So think about how worldwide the NCAA tournament is for people who just don't really follow basketball, but they get in on the pool, well, yeah, on, and on, on the brackets, brackets and, and all that, all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. So it's a that's a big deal, and now it's there's nothing. And and we found out yesterday, so, Valero Texas Open done, and we just learned yep, about the, the Masters. Masters postponed. Yeah. So here's here's kind of a list of some of the things that that we're looking at. Okay. And we can show you some of the postponement and then are suspended, and then some of the things that are actually not going to take place. The NBA postponing. Now they're talking about trying to come back within 30 days as of yesterday when they when they uh, made the made the rule that they weren't going to play. So we'll see if it's within 30 days or not. 30 days would be inside the first round of the playoffs when they would normally start. So I think that's why they want to target 30 days so mm -hmm. they may be able to play the playoffs and and well, could, they could just guess, extend the season. Couldn't well, they, they? they could, mean, but then you're getting then you're getting into late June and you're getting into July. Then that means they would have to start the uh, the regular season next season. Probably have to push that back a little well, bit. So it affects everything. There are but, also the venues where they play the games right, might be so booked gotta, for something else. They got to so look have to at schedules and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So one of the theories is, which is kind of what I just kind of threw out there yesterday, was they want to get. They would like to start the first round of the playoffs. They'll just take the top eight and east and west right and call it good that's so if it. you're not in the top eight you're not in the playoffs but i i'm sure that's one of the options they're they're discussing we don't know we're just a hundred different things we're yeah, yeah we're, we're just, just we're just spitballing here on, on what they might do but but that's a possibility they're still practicing they're, they're still, still allowed practicing. to practice mm -hmm. okay so, right so you got and, that going and speaking of these venues one of the first things we started talking about is all the people that work right. at these venues and there are a couple people stepping up in a big way we know mark cuban you're talking about mark cuban stepping up and so going to take care of the salaries, salaries of those people kevin love from the cleveland cavaliers donating a hundred thousand dollars to workers at that arena in Cleveland. So you figure that's probably going to happen at a lot of these videos. Yeah, once somebody starts, usually that. other people yeah, jump usually. on. And, and, you know, I think these guys can, can, can afford it. Yeah. The, these, these Major League Baseball players mm -hmm. and these basketball players and the XFL kill the rest of their season. So so they could probably help out a little bit. But so NASCAR's you're going. Them doing it. That, which is donations, which is really kind of strange. But NASCAR says, hey, no fans in the stands. We're running in Atlanta this weekend. I just got through checking, and they're they're still planning on running. So so that was the suspended ones. And here's the uh, the cancellations or the uh, we're not doing it this year. Remember you mentioned uh, Valero Texas Open is right. gone. There and, we go. And it happened. It stuff just happening so fast. Yesterday they had the the boys basketball tournament for the UIL tournament in the Alamo Dome. Right. Cole played and won. And then they said we're done. We're going to postpone this, so I don't know if they're going to be able to play a basketball tournament later on. But they just they just called it well, off after after one of I the mean, games. I mean, and you got to think. Hopefully, so. this is going to be contained, and we'll get a vaccine and treatments and all that before football season. Because talk about contact sport. Right. And they've got their OTAs coming up. They've got the draft coming up for the NFL. And then, of course, they've got their, their training camps coming up this summer. So you hope something happens before uh, then. My son plays D3 lacrosse at a small school up mm -hmm. in Arkansas. And the NCAA, NCAA and, of course, the, their little conference, and it is a fairly small conference, said, hey, we're done after today. I found this interesting, too. It says the conference has requested an additional year of eligibility waiver from the NCAA for all spring sport student-athletes affected by this nationwide yeah. health crisis. It's, I mean, and, and think about 
about all, all these other colleges, just, just D1. The, uh, the college baseball season, done. Mm -hmm. Track and field, done. done. I mean, all this stuff is just, is just, wide. It's just, it's just so strange, especially when you follow sports all your life and you turn on the TV and you can't even find, you know, Australian ESPN's rules football. ESPN's not right, even right. on. Well, that's what I was going to say. How do you run a sports network now? Yeah, I, you, you go back and you find an archive coronavirus. video, like, you're yeah, running the Super Bowl you, from... I guarantee you, you're, everything is going to be like like the greatest game ever. Right. And that's, what, that's, they're gonna, that's how they're going to pump Michael it up. Michael Jordan's what is ESPN best. doing going to do? That's what you I was know? just saying. Fox sports, is ESPN going to even just, be on the air? It's just, I'm sure they're going to, they're trying to figure out something. Well, like, they start running sports movies, major league, field of dreams. Games, uh, the natural. Here, they they become a movie out. network. Here's yeah. the 1989 World Series. Yeah, you know? Moneyball. That's, 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 that's how they're going to have to fill that, that time. They're gonna Analyzing like plays, that. if they yeah. do end up being postponed and coming back. Okay, let's analyze yeah. what's happened and where they might be. The NFL Network runs a lot of games. Right. You know, they're all of a sudden classics. Well, that's I, I assume that that's some that of the stuff that ESPN is going to have to consider. Just we are going just back and getting getting archives deep into the archives. We're, we haven't even grasped the, no. the ripple effects, the domino effect on the on the, the economy for e beyond even professional sports. And, and, and they're sports. thinking that like uh, four to six weeks is how right. long this thing well, is probably going to I heard Mark last. Cuban on, on a, a cable network show this morning and he was talking about after this thing peaks, once it starts going down, once there's less and in, in less cases, few and fewer cases, then that's when he thinks the NBA will say, hey, all right, we're going to get back into this thing. And, okay. and they're, they're talking, you know, four to six weeks. Obviously, we're not doctors. We have no idea how long this is going to last. We'll just have to wait and see. But but hopefully, just hopefully, cross your fingers that this, you know, we get yeah. to peak in, peak and in a while. Move on. Let's get speaking of moving on, it. let's go outside so. with uh, live cam, bring Katie Blake into the conversation. Well, we think the temperatures are peaking too high right now. I know, it's a bit too soon for this uh, late spring-like warmth. We have the spring equinox uh, happening next Thursday. We were at 87 yesterday, so yes, it's been very warm, very muggy this spring break week. We've got a lot of clouds out there this morning. No rain falling out of those clouds, though. Just shy of 70 degrees at the airport. That's where we have been for most of the morning. And as some of these low clouds begin to uh, filter out over the next several hours, we should see things warm up to the low 80s this afternoon. If we've got plans out and about this evening, skies will continue to be mostly cloudy. Even if some of those low clouds break out, we have a lot of high clouds uh, streaming in overhead, and it'll be warm and humid through the evening hour still in the low 70s even as we uh, approach 10 11 o'clock tonight if you had a car wash in your plans uh, maybe rethink that we've got some better rain chances coming as early as monday of next week scattered showers and storms in the forecast we'll talk more about those better rain chances and take another look at your planning forecast coming up here in just a bit mark leslie Thank you, Katie. Let's check out Transkai 35 at Alamo. No problems to report. We are still monitoring the press conference the city and the health department has scheduled. Uh, they're setting things up, but that hasn't started yet. As soon as it does, we'll bring it to you live. We've done stories before about how Americans like to spend lavishly and for good reason on our furry friends. Because they're not just furry friends, they're part of the family. They well, are. it turns out people are spending a lot of money to fight sicknesses and to keep our loved ones alive. Uh, aging American dogs undergoing things like cardiac treatment, stem cell transplant, tra tracheal stents, pacemakers, other sophisticated and very expensive procedures to prolong their lives. Now the owners of the dogs, many of whom have been around long enough to watch the children grow up and to provide support through countless family joys and traumas, they're going to great lengths to prolong the life, paying bills of up to $3,000 for stem cell therapy for arthritis, $7,000. And the news conference is beginning. Let's listen in. Let's just go right to it. This case is related to out-of-state travel, but it is not in any way connected to the federal mission involved in the repatriated cruise ship evacuees at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. Metro Health Director Don Emmerich will provide the details about this first travel-related case in just a moment. The fact that we now have a case of COVID-19 in our city is not entirely surprising. And I want to remind you of the continued importance of sanitary practices such as washing your hands often, not touching your face, social distancing, and staying home if you have symptoms. All the guidance that the health professionals have been giving us for some time now. With the guidance of our excellent health professionals, we've been preparing ourselves for this day and taking precautions. And so I'm confident our prevention efforts have helped and will continue to do so. 
On March 2nd, I issued a declaration of public health emergency to give us tools to keep the federal quarantine contained. That declaration expired after seven days. This travel-related case was confirmed late last night after we spent much of yesterday preparing a declaration of public health emergency to give our community the best defenses necessary in the event of community spread. So today I am also issuing a declaration of public health emergency. The first travel-related case underscores the importance of additional measures to protect the public, and I'm giving our health officials the best tools at our disposal to protect the public. To limit the spread of the virus, the Declaration of Public Health Emergency will prohibit large gatherings of 500 people or more. We are strongly advising that people do not have gatherings of 250 or larger, but if you do, you will need to take the precautions outlined by the CDC. Health officials are clear. Large crowds increase the risk of spreading the coronavirus. This is an important step in preventing the spread of the disease and making sure our community can come out of this outbreak as quickly as possible. Prevention and containment are important goals. We can all help accomplish these goals, and we need everyone's cooperation. The declaration will be in effect for seven days. A measure for renewing it at, le at, at least 30 days will be on next week's City Council agenda. We'll examine the need for another declaration as necessary. As you know, the Tejano Music Festival and the St. Patrick's Day Parade are expected to have crowds larger than 500, and so they will be impacted by this declaration. We've already been in communication with them. And also this morning, I've activated our Emergency Operations Center for additional preparedness and response. So now I'm going to turn it over to Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf, and then we'll get to Don. Well, thanks, Mayor, and thanks for uh, taking the lead in this initiative. Uh, uh, banning uh, gatherings of over 500 people will be a step in the right direction. Uh, we'll be reviewing your ban and uh, putting together a number of things that we're working on at the county to follow up and make sure that we uh, apply that also to the other 26 cities of Bear County, as well as the incorporated areas of Bear County. Uh, there are a number of other issues that we're working on that are particularly related to the county uh, that we have uh, serious concerns about. Uh, Sheriff Salazar is with us this morning, and uh, he has to host some uh, 3,800 3, prisoners every day, sometimes bumping up over 4,000, and that's a concern for us, uh, for people to be unnecessarily arrested uh, that are nonviolent offenders. Uh, for revoking of uh, probation uh, for minor offenses and bringing them to jail just uh, makes it even more difficult for us. Uh, District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is with us here this morning. Uh, he's going to be reviewing the number of cases that are similar to that and making sure that we don't cause a ha health hazard at our own jail uh, with a number of people coming in that do not need to be there. And we've tried to emphasize that many, many times over the, last so, over the last several months. We'll need the cooperation of the San Antonio Police Department as well as the sheriff's deputies that are out on the, out on the patrol to help us, to help us, to help us do that. Uh, we also have with us this morning Judge Ron Hull, who's the uh, administrative judge for the uh, criminal uh, felony cases, and uh, Judge Longoria is with us also from, that handles all the misdemeanor cases. Uh, they met yesterday, I believe it was, and is it 30 days or 60? 30 days, uh, they will not be convening juries at the, at the courthouse. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that there'll be something like 2,000 less uh, people coming into the courthouse that, 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 that will uh, provide an additional safeguard for those of us that are working there. We'll be looking at a number of work-related issues, uh, dealing with our own departments, and. We hope to be able to share that information with you later on today. So, Mayor, uh, thank you so much for the leadership you're taking. Uh, we're very pleased with the uh, Metro Health Department and the partnership that they've had with the county. Kyle Coleman's with us here this morning, who's the head of our uh, emergency. So, we're all standing together, united, city and county. Uh, we want to be sure we're getting across the message to everybody. And I might just add, just be cautious. You can look right here at this press conference. I, uh, 
I noticed that the uh, kept everybody a few feet away from everybody. And uh, we know that, that uh, the, the coronavirus spreads because someone is within about six foot and droplets may come to you or if it's on surface. So uh, uh, just everybody be cautious uh, and uh, uh, we're going to be fine here in San Antonio. So thank you. Okay, now we'll hear a little bit more of the detail of our first travel related case from Metro Health Director Don Emmer. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor, Judge, Don Emmerich, Metro Health Director. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your continued coverage of this issue. Certainly, the, we rely on you to help us spread the information to assure that we have the most factual and trusted information out in the community. So again, thank you for that. We also want to ask you to help us maintain a sense of calm in our community and to help us prevent the spread of this illness in any further. So let me share a few details. Um, it is a quickly evolving situation. So I'm gonna give you what we know today. There will be more changes and more information throughout the day. So let me just tell you what I know right now. This is a travel related case and I'll explain why that's important it, to differentiate that between community spread. This is the first case of travel-related case of, of COVID-19 in San Antonio. A community spread, so let me explain the difference. The community spread case indicates that spread is person to person. Here's the differentiator. Without exposure to an illness or travel history, this COVID-19 is not community spread, thus not person to person. It is travel-related. This individual is in self-quarantine along with their family and they are in stable condition. This person began showing symptoms earlier this month, tested positive for COVID-19 yesterday, March 12th. We learned of the positive result late last night and are currently conducting an extensive contact investigation of this person's history. We will continue to provide you information as we receive it. We have to stay the course. We've been preparing for this. This is what the mayor mentioned earlier. We've been preparing for this for weeks. And so we have to stay the course as the community and the, and the, uh, as we continue to prepare, take precautions, practice social distancing, and take extra care to safeguard our most vulnerable populations. Based on what we know about COVID-19, there is a higher risk among adults 60 years and older Persons with uh, certain health conditions such as heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, kidney disease, and weakened immune systems. Additionally, people who are pregnant or who were pregnant in the last two weeks and or those who are experiencing homelessness are at higher risk for contracting in any respiratory illness. If you fit those descriptions, so we're talking to the community right now. If you fit any of those descriptions, please take precautions such as the following. Do not go to public gatherings of 10 or more unless it is essential. If you can telecommute or stay home, you should. Avoid people who are sick. Even if you see a cough, just try to avoid it. You don't know what type of respiratory illness it is. It could be the flu, it could be anything. Just avoid it. Make a plan to prepare yourself if you get sick or your family. Know who will take care of you if your caregiver gets sick. Talk to your doctor to have enough medication on hand if you are sick. And so those who have chronic diseases or underlying conditions who do require self-management of prescriptions, please talk to your provider and ensure that you have enough on hand to manage those conditions in the event you do get sick. Call your doctor immediately if you develop warning signs such as difficulty breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, confusion, blueness of the lips or face, and or fever. So here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that we are absolutely aware of the presence of COVID-19, not only in our community, but we are watching across the state and across the country and all steps are being taken to keep everything isolated as, possible, as much as we can. 
So you've likely read, heard, and seen a lot of information about testing criteria. We get a lot of calls about that. And so I want to try to provide you a little bit of information. Metro Health is revising our local testing criteria to make COVID-19 tests more accessible to the community. We will share more additional information as we have it. That decision was made as of last night. We are here with you this morning, and so we'll be working on that new criteria throughout the day, and we'll be sure to share that with you as soon as we have it. Remember, testing happens with the provider. It doesn't happen with us. We're the supplier of the testing, but it's your provider that is the one who can make the call on the test. There are certain criteria, as I mentioned, we are loosening that up, but signs and symptoms are imperative. This test is not a screening. What we hear a lot is people saying, well, I need to go and see if I have it. That's not what these tests are. The tests are diagnostic tools. They're not screening tools. And so if you are experiencing any of those symptoms that we just mentioned, the first thing you need to do is to call your provider. If you, and call ahead, do not show up at the office. We do not need any unintentional spread of the disease if you have it. Call ahead to your provider, tell them what it, your symptoms are, and they will give you the guidance in the future for what you do next. If you do not have a provider, call ahead to an urgent care. Call ahead, don't just show up. They will give you guidance, and that's where some of the testing can occur. If you don't have insurance, and maybe not going to an urgent care is practical for you, then call ahead to one of the free clinics in the, t in, in the city or in the county, or a federally qualified health center. That's where the tests are. The tests are not with Metro Health, and we're getting a lot of calls requesting testing from us. It has to be provider distributed, okay? The last thing I would say is I'm urging you, please do not go to the ER. Talk to your provider first. Everything that I just outlined, the ER is the last resort. Now that sounds counterintuitive, but I'm gonna tell you why. We need to protect our healthcare workers, front and center. And so when you go into an emergency room, you could possibly, and if you have symptoms and you don't know if you're positive or not, you could be exposing many, many, many of our healthcare workers. If our healthcare workers go down, this becomes a problem. So help us by following that protocol, go to your providers first, please do not show up at the ER. I want to thank the local community again for your continuing um, ability to share this information and to assure that we're getting the factual information out there. Um, I want to reiterate the things that we can do to help prevent this. Practice good hygiene. I was so happy to see everybody doing the elbow bump when you came in. Message is getting out. Continue to do that. <clears throat> I challenge all of you to come up with the most creative way. I'll be watching, post it on media, whatever. But I want to encourage you to continue to do that and practice good hand washing with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water is not available, use alcohol-based and hand sanitizers. I also want to mention we know that there's a short supply of a lot of that on the, um, on the shelves. Bleach and water does just wonders. So if you're trying to wipe down surfaces, you can also use bleach and water to do that. So call your doctor immediately if you develop warning signs such as difficulty breathing, persistent pain, or pressure in the chest. So with that, um, three, uh, three other things. If you want to stay up to date with where we are, certainly we always have our information on the website. We also are making available the Ready South Texas app. If you have a, a cell phone or a, another, um, or yeah, a cell phone, look up the app in your, in your app store, Ready South Tex um, app. We are already starting to push messaging out through that platform, and there's information already loaded on there for you to stay informed. Visit sanantonio.gov and follow the city of San Antonio on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yes, and so before I hand, hand it over for you to ask questions, I'm going to um, hand this over to Deputy City Manager Maria Vil, uh, Gomez, and she is going to translate my statements in Spanish. Buenos dias, mi nombre es Maria Gomez. soy la subadministradora de la ciudad de San Antonio. 
All right, everybody, we just want to, as they are um, doing the Spanish information, we wanted to catch you up in case you're just turning on the television or you missed any of this. The city has confirmed we have our first COVID-19 case. It's travel-related, not transmission community-related, which is a big difference because it wasn't person-to-person -person here in town. They did get this by traveling outside of San Antonio. Uh, they covered a lot of ground in this press conference, and uh, we are standing by, of course, for another presser at the top of the hour related to Fiesta, now that we know a little bit more about this. But as far as this one travel-related case, they said they confirmed it late last night. The person's in self-quarantine with their family, and they actually started showing some symptoms earlier this month. But they're doing well, they said. They're doing they're great. Self they're self-quarantined at home, and they are doing an extensive contact investigation to find out anyone who may have come into contact with any of these people. But an interesting thing that the mayor said is that March 2nd, you may recall, he issued a health emergency. It expires after seven days. So mm -hmm. today he has issued another one. That means no gatherings, public gatherings at 500 or more, which means the Tejano Music Festival and the St. Patrick's Day Parade both have been canceled. That's right. So they'll, they'll, that runs another seven days. City Council next week will seek to extend that out 30 days. They will review it, yes, and then seven days and maybe do it for 30, which of course would impact Fiesta. It would. They have a news conference scheduled at 10 o'clock to talk about Fiesta, whether they're going to postpone it or cancel it or what's going to happen with the schedule. We'll bring you that live as well. Also, the Metro Health talking about revising the testing criteria, and they said we would probably learn some more about that later on today. The other interesting thing, too, and a lot of people have smartphones, is the development of, of this new app, and I, it popped right up in the App Store, Ready South Texas. It's a city app, and it's uh, got all sorts of tabs. It says, make my plan, need to know my plan dashboard, emergency noun services, evacuate map and shelters just so we've got a, again a plan of action and everybody's kind of on the same page. A couple of other interesting things uh, that uh, County Judge Mayor Nelson Wolf said is they want to prevent a health hazard at the jail by bringing in too many people so they're actually going to reduce the criteria for arresting people right now if it's a very small crime or something little they're not going to arrest and bring them in because they want to make sure the population doesn't get too large and no juries at the courthouse for 30 days and that that folds into what paul was talking on right here gmsa at nine uh, middle of the week about uh, how the wheels of justice uh, still needed to turn but it looks like everything's going to be on hold there at the Justice Center and the County Courthouse for at least a month. At least a month. And a couple of other interesting things that I took out of this from Dawn Emery with Metro Health is she said that if you are two weeks pregnant and or homeless, you're at higher risk. We had heard about if you have an underlying health issue or if you are over 60 or have some kind of an immune system problem. But I hadn't heard about that one yet. And they're also recommending First of all, you can't have any public gatherings of more than 500, but they're saying unless it's really essential to keep any gatherings, even private ones, at 10 or less people. 10 or less. And the rules keep changing a little bit, but we can assure you we've got uh, lots of resources here. We're going to continue to follow this story as it develops. We've got a huge digital team, so you can always default back to our website, kset.com. We're going to have running updates here in the coming days, weeks, and it would appear to be months. And as soon as she's finished talking, of course, the press will start answering and asking questions, and we'll join the press conference again in that moment. Uh, there were rumors going around that this is what the press conference was, was going to be about, and sure enough, it is. We don't have any idea or details. They didn't share it with us about where this person contracted it, where they traveled from, if it was within our country or outside of our country. They just said it was very important to understand that it is travel related and not community person to person transmission. Now the other big question of course is what is going to happen with Fiesta which was still set for about a month away or so. Based on what we're hearing here the criteria has been set, the groundwork's been laid to at the very least postpone Fiesta That's for the foreseeable future. In less than seven days they say okay it's all right now. Let's listen back in. We will get through this. San Antonio is a resilient city. It's a city where we get things done through teamwork, and that's exactly what you're seeing here today. Uh, the city, the county, the state, our federal delegation have all been working together over the last several months to make sure that we're in the best position possible to prevent and contain the spread of this virus. We are working with the entire community to make sure that we do that. And so I want to thank our community for taking all these precautions and putting us in a position where we can help each other and also see us through uh, as quickly as possible. And so I want to say thank you uh, to my council colleagues. Uh, a number of them are here, and they have all been working very hard to make sure that our community has the right information about taking these.